Karina Kapoor Khan, it is a pleasure to speak to you on BBC Asian Network. How are you? Very well and so happy to be talking to you again after almost five years. The last time we were speaking, it was at your home and we were celebrating 20 years of Karina Kapoor Khan. Firstly, where have the last four or five years gone? They seem to have just flown by, right? Well, we, we had like two years in COVID. So I think we lost so much of our life and our time, uh, you know, just kind of at home. And I think I'm happy that the last three years has just been super, super busy uh, doing some fun movies. You didn't lose any time during that two years, though. You had another baby. You were like, what's the best thing I can do during this lockdown? I can have baby number two. Exactly. I I don't know about the others, but I made the most use of it. You, Karina, were the first ever celebrity that I met properly when I was 18 years old. You came to our studio and you came to our (laughs) We Are Family. So this is 2010 that you came. Everywhere you walked, there was a star presence. You were so lovely, but you knew from the moment you walked in to the moment you left that this was a star. Did you feel like a star? No, I think the the, the thing about me is that because I don't probably behave like a star and I don't even know what it's like, what is the meaning of behaving like a star? Because I think it's just that I, I think I'm just the way I am. You know, uh, most people are always like, oh, so it behaves like a star or she feels like a star. I, I, you know, I mean, I just am what I am. And like, like you said, you know, I'm just going about my day or, um, you know, doing my interviews or doing my job. And people just say, okay, stop with it. So I think it's just, I think I'm just blessed. And the more real I am, I think the more people can. But the reason I wanted to show you that photo and the reason I wanted to mention that is because when I watched Crew, the first thing that I said was, wow, the star is back. Like, Bebo, the star is back. She looks incredible. She owns the screen. She's mesmerizing. I mean, firstly, tell me about the reaction you've got to this movie. I think people are like, I mean, I I always knew that the film was like a fun, entertaining, good movie. But the fact that the film has done so well and, you know, people have overreacted, I think, to Jasmine's character. I was like, I wasn't so sure. I was like, I don't know. But somewhere in my heart, I knew that my fans and the audiences love seeing me in entertaining roles. Deep down in my heart, I was like, I, I think this is going to like really, really like connect. I think all over the world, like I'm getting messages from like, you just mentioned you went twice in the UK. People in Africa have been messaging me that they've gone like two, three times to see the film already. So I think after really long, people are going to the cinema and having fun. How wholesome was it to receive a script like this in today's time where it doesn't feel like films like this get made much anymore? Obviously, ever since COVID, all the big ticket films have been, you know, all the big action genres and, you know, like everyone making the action mask kind of movies. So I think suddenly, like after two years, you had this movie that was headlined by three beautiful women. You know, this heist kind of thing. You've always seen like, you know, guys do it, make plans, do that and lead the role. But you've never seen three girls actually take on, you know, a heist and actually pull it off. I think that they found like funny, the dialogue have been super, the way the screen played the music. Were you getting bored of being like D-glam on screen? Because you did Janija and you did the Buckingham Murders. Both of those roles didn't require this sort of glam. Of course. I mean, ever since Corbin, the film with Army with the last that I think that that was the word, very like D-glam. Then obviously like Janija, which was on Netflix, which was again very, very real. Um, and Buckingham Murders, which is going to come later in the year, which is so special, was also. So I thought this was like, you know, the breath of fresh air that, you know, people have always enjoyed watching kind of play this part. But I enjoy doing different things. I can't keep doing, you know, one kind of thing. So like now we've done like a lot of the different parts that I've enjoyed, like, you know, Dani Dan, Buckingham Murder. The crew was glamorous after a long time. So I'm going to keep picking and choosing, you know, different parts. Like you, you can't believe really that the same girl played Dani Dan as the crew. My job is to keep doing and entertaining the audiences in different ways that will reinventing you also as a actor. 
How do you get that that uh, that skill in being able to own the screen with just one look? That I don't know because I don't know that I don't know. I think it's it's just it's my I think passion for you know films and always wanting to be an actor. Uh, I think that that hunger is still there in me that, that whenever I come on screen, I feel like that it has to be the best or I don't want to do it. I, I, you know, I, then I just want to be with my kids and be at home. But when you see me on the silver screen, it has to be like, I just have to be like in the part and, you know, I have to be like entertaining. I have to make it work. I, I have that, that hunger in me as an actor is always there because I think after a long time, I played this glamorous part and I really wanted to nail it. And, you know, the idea is that you like characters on screen. The audience is like characters that keep them empty, funny, witty. They tend to, you know, fall for those. They tend to like those characters more, you know, because you connect to the realness of the character. So I think with me, that's why you always like Pooh and Geet and Jasmine. Because somewhere, they're also characters that people feel like, oh my God, this was inevitable. Karina, so you don't want to be that glamorous woman all the time. You do. I mean, an, an interview you did recently, you said, I don't even want to be a star anymore. I don't want the stardom anymore. But when the audience go wild for crew and they go wild for the glamour, it's like, oh, what am I doing? Like, what do I do? What do I pick? You know, it's it, it's um, it's really honestly not saying anything, but it, it's really... I feel like, you know, doing these parts that are very lightly glamorized and real. I find it easy, but it's it's the glamorous parts that are actually, you know, put the pressure on the star power. That, you know, this is what people expect her to be or her to, you know. So that pressure is something that is a lot. So I have to preserve it. You know, I have to kind of keep balancing it out and you know, like doing some parts that are like this, some parts that are like that. And it is exhausting after a while, you know, because I've been doing it for 25 years. And um, it's probably the first time in the history of Indian cinema that, you know, I mean, I have two kids, but people still don't even associate that. They just like, no, we want to see her in the glamorous parts. And Jacqueline and crew have just gone to prove that, which is also amazing because it's breaking a glass ceiling to the next level because Jasmine was hot. She was sassy. She was bold. She was the girl who makes, you know, like, let's do this and let's do that. And it just proved the fact that, you know, age is just a number because people just, you know, want to see you on screen. They want to see your relatability. They want to see as glamorous as you look. You're, you know, it, it's not important. So for us, it's a very big achievement that to do this glamorous role at this point, it's also a lot of pressure, but it's also breaking the glass ceiling in like a huge way, which... I'm happy to do. What was that camaraderie like with Dabu and Kriti on set? How empowering was it for you to do a film with two other female protagonists and it just be a light entertainer? I think the cast just worked out perfectly because it's the chemistry also with all of us that kind of has made the film one day. Everyone's talking about the fact that that the chemistry is like so good. You know, like Karishma and whoever seen the film, they all are like, my God. Like, it's just the warmth of the chemistry, you can feel the energy. And uh, I think everyone of us were such secure actors. We were so prepared in terms of what character we were playing and how we're going to do it. I think that's what made the film. And it's been such an honor to have worked with both of them. One who's been, you know, such a stalwart like Tapu, who I've known since I've been, you know, like seven years old. She's done so many films with Parishma and, you know, having to be with her in the same frame was like a- an absolute honor. And I think Kriti being, I think she has this energy that where she just wants to give it her best. You know, she wants to do it and she just has that kind of eagerness which this generation has and that worked for all of us. And she's such a lovely actor and, you know, done such lovely films. So I think it's just, all of us and our energy that and you know, this it just worked. Everybody's characters were so different. One of the other things that I wrote in my notes when I was watching the film 
was Hogi Beyonce, Hogi Rihanna, Sadi Te A Beyonce, A Rihanna. Hogi Rihanna, Hogi Beyonce, Sadi Te A Rihanna. It's hard to put into words, but you have whatever that thing is. Can you put it into words for me? What is that thing? You know, I don't know. I think everyone has an X factor. You know, it's just something. Seth so always says that, you know, to be an actor and a star, we don't know what it is. But there has to be, it's just just some sort of an X factor that you need to have or somebody. It's just, it's just anything. I don't know, your voice, your, your, your eye. There's just something that needs to just, you know, just that it's like a laser beam, you know, it just needs to just connect with the audience. I don't even know what it is. I think it's just that I'm possibly being as real as I can in front of the camera as well as off the camera. So I I think somewhere uh, each person who has given this much love can see can see me, you know, through my characters on screen, through my interviews. There's a there's a certain uh I don't know, there's something that I've never, I don't have any barriers of, you know, having this, you know, preconceived notion of being a star. Maybe I'm lucky because I come from a family where I've just always been surrounded by stars. So, you know, no one has an opportunity to be starry in front of anybody in our home. Because it's quite leveling because everybody's a good actor. Everyone's, you know, a star in their own right. Uh... So somewhere we all have to be very real with each other. And I think that's what, what it is. My parents have really kept me very like real and grounded. And I can't thank them enough for, you know, never allowing me to feel like I mean, everyone keeps asking me, but I, I honestly don't know what it's like to be a star. I'm just doing my job and having fun. I love playing my characters. And, you know, um, yeah, that, there's just a lot of pressure, of course, but. Fine. You said just now that you've kept it real both on screen and off screen. But do you think you keep it too real off screen sometimes? You can't hide your emotions. You are one of those actors who can't hide how you're feeling. I don't know if you've seen this clip. It's a, it's the interview that you did with Neha recently, with uh, Neha Dupia recently on, on her podcast. And this one clip has gone viral with how you react to the word influencer. 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 Have you seen this? No, I'm saying that was it that I don't know. Or it was an expression that I mean, sometimes my expressions are put into different questions and contexts and memes are just made that okay, this is what she said because I'm so uh, like you know, I'm so like I, I've expressed myself so much that sometimes I feel that people just mix my expressions with different answers and it just becomes like a meme and it just goes viral. This one is very much you saying influencer and then rolling your eyes at the influencer. What was the context of the question? That no one thinks about oh, what it was. So uh, obviously no offence to anyone at all, ever, because I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. So I, I just don't know what the question was that, you know, this this meme has gone on. I don't even know. But there are like thousands of memes of mine that go viral with my expression because I think, like you said, you know, I, I am so expressive sometimes. So I listened to a podcast called the Khandan Podcast, and they were reviewing Crew as well. And one of the one of the hosts was saying that Garina knows that whatever she does will be criticized, but she still goes ahead and does it. There will be critics of yours who will say that your role in, in Crew is just an exaggerated version of who you might be in real life as well. When you know that everything you do is scrutinized and is criticized, how much more do you think about it before you take those decisions? I think anything that actors, when you are an actor and, and a star, I think you have to be prepared for ratings as well as criticism. You have to be prepared for success. With success comes failure. If you do not know that this is what happens in this in fraternity and industry, you cannot be here. Because, I mean, you are a public figure. So this place is not for you. Because it comes with everything. With so much joy, there's also pain. Um, there are things that you might do which might be misconstrued, which you don't like. 
a lot of things. But with it comes a lot of box office box office success. There would be a lot of praise. There would be a lot of that. So I think it's a tough profession, and you have to wear your. It's like being a warrior, you know. It's like you're you're in you know you're in the army. You you have to have your your armor intact at all times because you have to be, and your armor being your confidence, your strength, your ability to handle situations. It's very tough. And I think for me also, over the years and over 25 years, I've learned to be a, a warrior girl today because of every single thing that I've gone through in my career. And uh, because I've had, you know, with success, a lot of failure as well. And with failure, there's always been, been so much praise. Like you said, there's now, you know, then with the praise, there'd be criticism. But yeah, that's just the way. And today I'm much, much more stronger than what I was when I joined, when I started shooting at 17. Uh, so you have to put in that time and give that patience. So it is tough. Let's blame Karan Johar. Who didn't really help things. It just created this aura of who you are in reality. That diva tag kind of stuck. People still believe that you are that person today. But I think who was so iconic and so ahead of its time. The fact is that like 21 years later, we're still talking about her. Like every, even Gen Z and whatever, all the young generation, they're, they're still connecting with somewhere that character left such an impact. It was, it was, you know, the beginning of pop culture. It had that kind of vibe that people were like, oh my God, they've not seen a larger than life character uh, like that on, on the big screen from a mainstream actor. So, um, I mean, it's fine. I don't mind people thinking that. And I mean, I enjoy it. But also, I think now in the last 15 years, um, I have done so many different roles, which had now, you know, broken away from uh, that image. And now I think people realize the seriousness of my passion for acting a lot, lot more in the last decade because I've taken a conscious decision to each film do something different. You mentioned your sister watched Crew. Her song is an integral part of the movie. Did you know that was always going to be a part of the film before you begun? And how was it to just give that song and your sister a kind of homage through crew? I, I think so. I think obviously when we were shooting the film, we didn't know. But then later, the producer, Ria Kapoor, she told me, she was like, you know, I think I'm going to get this song and we're going to use it. And I was like, obviously really excited about it because it is such an iconic song. And uh, I love the moment, my most favourite part also in the film is when she sings with Abu in the climax of the film and they're happy and you know Sona Kitna Sona they sing and um, it is a it is a kind of a like a a moment of you know like achievement and triumph for you know their characters uh, so somewhere I think that yeah it just worked out and it was perfect for a high spin to have that kind and everyone's praised the song the way it's been used in the film. Karina what do you call your sister? I call her Dodo, just like the world now does. <laughs> but what is her name? Oh, God. Is there something like a thing about it? This is a big deal, Karina. You are the person to blame for this, okay? Because your sister's name has been misunderstood for three decades in cinema. And whenever you take her name, you mispronounce it. I go with no. I go with whatever the interviewer asks me. You know, I'm very, very like, I'm like, yeah, whatever, like, you know, you love her, call her what you want. And um, I think she's also pretty, like, whatever, easy about it. And, you know, I think a lot of people didn't know and they couldn't, like, pronounce it or because it's a very thing that, okay, there's nothing, what is charisma versus charisma? And charisma is like a miracle. So then I think she also just kind of like, whatever, okay, whatever you want to call it. But obviously, her name doesn't have an H in it. And it's just K-A-R-I-S-N-A on her past. 
Because you know the whole internet is coming for me. Because I was out there defending your sister. The very first time I met her, I asked her, can you say, hi, I'm Karishma Kapoor and you're listening to me on the BBC. And she said, hi, I'm Karisma Kapoor. Ever since then, I've been saying her name is Karisma, her name is Karisma. But because of you and because in every interview you say Karishma. I think you can just call her no, no. That's so much more easier, right? <laughs> and then it's, it's less controversial, but... I think, you know, she's so chill and she's like, whatever is easy for people to to feel and say, you know, it's, it's about the love and it's about the emotion. But obviously, like, if you say, like, what her name is in the passport, it's Charisma Kapoor. Speaking of Charisma Kapoor, do you not think it's about time that we got a Charisma Kapoor, Karina Kapoor film? Because it's been four decades collectively of you two in movies. Yeah, yeah. More. <laughs> yeah, so when do we get the Kapoor sister film? I don't know when, you know, I mean, it has to be a, like a fun kind of entertaining movie and we're waiting for that right kind of, you know, to get both of us together. Have you ever been right. close? People have always tried like, okay, let's do a show with you guys or let's do something with you guys. But I mean, you know, I think it should be like a fun movie, like a crew, you know, that could get us together. Um so we're obviously like, you know, not got that perfect, perfect script that, you know, done justice. Do you think you'd both be convinced? Because I feel like it's one of those things that you, if you ever did it, it would have to be perfect, right? So do you think you'd ever both say yes to it? If like both, we're both happy with our roles and we're both, you know, convinced that this is what um, we love doing. Like we both know that we want to do something that's entertaining and fun because that's what the audience likes to see both Lolo and me, you know, in. So um I think we are and we're very keen to work together. I mean I I mean I have like been her biggest fan forever. So um hopefully so let's see I mean we're like waiting ourselves this year we're going to see you on screen at least three times like we've already had crew then we're going to get Singham Returns and then we're going to get the Buckingham Murders as well I do want to know about Singham Returns though because you were part of the last movie as well but this seems like it is it's Singham on steroids it is massive there's a huge cast you've compared it to the Avengers um, what is it like being part of this movie it's one of the like the big ticket pot boilers which but it has like you know, it has emotion, it has action, it has all of that. And I have such a lovely role, which is uh, such a pivotal part of the the plot. Because, you know, even if you look at, you know, the big ticket films, like even in Hollywood, it's not like, you know, the woman would not just have a strong part. Because the emotion that runs through, whether it's like Iron Man, Avengers, whatever, there is an emotion out there that kind of connects, you know. So even in this, there is that emotion that comes from my character. So, I mean, I feel after crew to see me in this movie will be, again, another kind of a, like a huge 360 degree turn for me um, as an actor and for my fans. And then after that, Bucking the Murder, which will again be something that probably you've never really seen me do because it's like, you know, it's half Hindi, half English. It's got a very different approach to cinema in itself because Hansel himself makes such different films so it's not in that movie it's not about the big commercially kind of you know number box office by its kind of thing it's more like a performance driven cinematic movie with um Singham please tell me that you're sharing screen space with the entire ensemble because you've got Ranveer you've got Deepika you've got Tiger you've got everyone will we see you on screen with them all I think so I think I'm sure that's the surprise of the film that you guys have to watch. But yeah, I mean, it is a stellar, stellar cast. And I think uh, there's no one better than Rohit Shetty to kind of, you know, bring us all together in a frame. So I'm sure, uh, yeah, you guys have to wait to watch because it is going to happen. Did Ranveer and Deepika thank you while you were on set? Why? Why thank you? Why do you think Ranveer Singh and Deepika Padukone should be thanking you, Karina? Well, they, I mean, I, well, I believe in destiny and I believe that whatever is meant to be in your life will happen, you know, through any, you know, through anything. It's, you know why I'm saying this, yeah, right? It's all written to the stars and... And everything is not written for everyone to be a part of. 
if you had not walked out of Ram Leela, if you had not said no to Ram Leela, there would be no Ranveer and Deepika today. But that's why maybe they were destined to be together. Do you ever think about that about your own relationship as well? Because of course you could have been part of Kalho Na Ho, and that meant that mm. your relationship with Seth could have started a fair few years earlier as well. Have you ever thought about the fact of if I had made this decision, how different yeah. would my life be today? No, not necessarily. Maybe it would have been very different because, you know, I mean, that was maybe not the time, and that's why I strongly believe in timing because maybe that was not the time for us to be together, and things just happen. That so much in my life has been about timing, about choices, and I strongly believe in in destiny and what belongs to you will come to you. No matter what, but whatever is not meant to be yours, no matter how much you try to hold on or how much you try to do things or or make things happen, I am one of those girls that believe that it won't happen when it has to be. So I I think that everything in my life has worked out. I think perfectly fine timing wise. You know, a lot of comments that I see about you on the internet are about how you own your identity. And there's a lot of people out there who struggle to be comfortable in their own skin. So I would love for you to give us three tips, the beginner's guide on how to be a bebo. Yeah, I think the first thing is that I I don't get, you know, I I keep my circle and my bubble very small. I I try not to get affected by what you know happens, what people say, people do. Um, secondly, I think that you know to have. the right people around you to guide you i think and push you in the right direction be it friends family i think supporters i think you have to have the right people around you to to really you know push you in the right direction because ultimately you're around people all day in this profession or in any profession for that matter so keeping the right people around is very important here and that's what i've always done and i think the fact is just like you know belief belief in yourself belief in the fact that good things will happen uh trying to just be a happy person trying to just look at the positive side of life trying to not always uh you know look what's on someone else's plate you know it's all important we have to try to look at what's on our plate and try to fill our plate up first so i've always looked at life like that you know and that's the choice that you have to make So you've given us two which is the people you have around you don't look around too much the third beginner's guide to be bebo i want to be a sassy bebo tip how to be a sassy bebo i think the most important one would be like which no one loves yourself more than you you know you have to love yourself the most and and not depend on you know how others look at you so love yourself first before others can love you i think that's really important thank you so much for your time karina it's always a pleasure thank you thank you for your support always